Now, with day 10 of the Aussie Open due off in less than two hours' time, we return to tennis and joining me to look back and forward to what's been an interesting first slam of the year is former 27-ranked player Brian Vahaley of the USA. Brian, thanks for joining us. Let's deal with my boy, Andy Murray. Of course, Nadal retired hurt, but Andy played very well, didn't he? And he's looked good throughout the tournament. Yeah, and he's been playing great. I think one of the, the new things for him this year is he's not the favorite. I thought it was very difficult last year, all the expectations and pressure coming in. And he's kind of been able to sneak under the radar a little bit. And I think uh, he was well prepared for his match against Nadal. Nadal was certainly hurt, but I thought he played a very smart, very tactically aggressive match, which worked out really well. And, and I think he's poised to... Uh, to make quite a run at this tournament. Do you think the fact that Andy has gone through in straight sets and probably had a pretty easy ride is going to hurt him come the semifinals? You know, I don't. I think if you look at uh, who he'll be playing against, Silic um, just came from two five-set matches, playing against Del Potro, also Roddick, a very difficult draw. You know, Murray's got the experience. He doesn't need to have, you know, tough matches at this point. If anything, you're looking at a two-week-long Grand Slam event, very hot conditions down there. That's only going to play to his advantage. Now, people have talked about uh, Silic as the breakthrough player potentially of this year. Did you see signs of that against Roddick? Because I know that uh, Andy was hurt. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought he, he showed great courage at the end of the match. I mean, it's tough. He was up two sets. He had lost the third and fourth, seemingly out of the match, and, and it was going to be Roddick's experience to prevail. And I thought he did a, a really nice job handling the pressure, handling the moment. You know, this is, is new territory for him, and there is certainly some expectations on him. He's a very tall, athletic player. But I think uh, to see how well he handled that pressure, um, it, it was great, and I think it's only a sign of things to come for him. He certainly played some long matches, though. Is that going to hurt him? Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody's got experience to play, you know, to beat Del Potro, uh, who won the U.S. Open, then to beat Roddick. Um, to think that you've got enough in the tank to beat Murray, I think, will be a very difficult task. Certainly, his coaches will get him ready for it. But, uh, you know, in that hot sun in the beginning of the year, I think uh, Murray will be a heavy, heavy favorite. Let's just go back to that first match we talked about, Rafa Nadal, yet another injury, knee injury, same as last year. Now, your career ended early because of injury. Do you think that that's on the horizon for Rafa? No, I mean, I think, he, you know, he's, he's a great player and, and he's, uh, he'll take his time. He'll get the injuries taken care of. I think the issue and something that he had mentioned was, uh, you know, it's a long schedule throughout the year. And when you're playing 10 months of the year, then trying to get back ready for a grand slam is one of the first couple tournaments of the year is difficult. And certainly on that surface, it's a little more rubberized surface, which will be a little bit difficult for his knees. But, um, you know, we're three, four months out from, the, from Roland Garros, from Wimbledon, things like that. So I think it's just, uh, you know, he's going to need to take a break, but, but he'll be back. Do you think he needs to change the way he plays, though? Because he's so physical, puts such big demands on his body that it's inevitable almost that something will break down. You know, that was certainly the criticism early on in his career. You watch Federer, who's so smooth and, and easy, you know, and seemingly um, effortless when he's playing. And Nadal is just so much, uh, he's, he's using his knees, his shoulders so much more than the rest of the players. That, that, that's always been a concern. And, and when it's the amount of tournaments he was playing early on in his career, um, I think injuries are going to be a concern. And hopefully over time, he, he limits his schedule because he's, he's so great for the game. You hate to see injuries uh, continue to play a part. Okay, Djokovic, uh, Songa, uh, repeat the 2008 Aussie Open final. Obviously, Djokovic won then, but I think Songa's a much better player than he was, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, that was a little bit of a surprise. And Songa came with a lot of uh, energy and excitement that he brought to the crowd. And, and that was uh, a great run for him. I think now to solidify himself in the top ten, he's a different player. Um, do I think it'll be a similar result? Yes. I mean, I think Novak is playing exceptionally well. Um, I think he's got a great Serbian fan base there, which I think he'll be able to draw on also. But I, th I think it still will be a very competitive good match. Let's talk very briefly about uh, Federer Davidenko before we quickly move on to the women. Davidenko has beaten Fed the last two times, but of course Federer leads in 12-2 in past meetings. Do you see an upset there? You know, there is a potential for upset, I think, what you have to look at is Federer's results over the Grand Slams. And right now, I think he's running 10 straight Grand Slam finals, 17 out of 18 finals. Um, there's something that's extra special about him in the big tournaments, and he really saves his best tennis. And, and to beat him in three sets, you know, only a few players have proven that they can do that. And I think um, Davidenko will feel confident going into it, but I, but I like Federer in, in a long match. Right. Serena, Venus up in the quarterfinals coming, coming along. Uh, Serena meets Lina, uh, Venus, Victoria, Azarenka. Um, do you see anyone but a Williams winning this tournament? Um, you know, Serena is very tough to beat, especially when she's motivated. And I think with what happened at the U.S. Open, um, she's certainly looking to reestablish herself. I don't think she likes, you know, seeing girl, women who are, um, you know, taking time off and then coming back and winning her tournament on her turf. So I, I look for her. Uh, she looks very fit uh, this week. I think she's the clear favorite. Certainly, as you see Henan come back and, and the problems that Henan has given Serena in the past, I think could potentially be a problem. But uh, 
you know, I, you can't better it against Serena. No, I think the semi-final, should the Williams make it, will be the title match, in my opinion. No sure. disrespect, just thing. <laughs> Brian Bahaley, thanks very much for Thank joining you. us. Okay, stick around. We're back with the NBA after this short break.